descending from the clouds above the Indus. My flying palace walked with two Karachi. A mythological hero from the Maharabata. They're sure to give me the job. The job is made for me. The Viceroy of India. But I call this piece a song story. That is to say, it's, it's a, a narrative work of storytelling using words and music. And its subject is the 1930 R101 airship disaster. And what happened was the, in the late 20s, the British government built the biggest airship in the world, a seventh of a mile long. This is as big as a, the biggest ocean liner floating in the air. On its maiden flight, supposedly flying to India, it crashed and almost everybody on board, 50 or so people died. This is magnificent, I shall fly this ship to India and back. I've had no support in making this CD, so I've had to call on all my old friends. I've known Peter Hamill for years, ever since we formed Van de Graaff Generator together in the late 60s. Apart from his influence on me as a composer, the main reason I've asked him to sing is because he's such a tremendously powerful performer. And without his earlier work, um, it would have been impossible for me to conceive the idea of uh, putting together a long piece of narrative words and music like this. Those fools are afraid, they're yellow all through, that ship is quite safe. The theatrical possibilities of rock music have always been important to me, and out of all this has come the idea of developing Curly's airships as a piece of one-man musical theatre. It's been a tremendously exciting recording in Peter's studio in Bath, particularly with Arthur Brown, another rock legend. But nothing after 1930, nothing after the age of 55. I seem to have the role of the superstitious power maniac here, uh, Judge. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Um, he is the villain of the piece, I guess, but a really... Thank you. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. But a very charismatic very charismatic guy. Um, he was the Minister of Air at this time. If this thing didn't work, he was finished politically. So he would stop at nothing to make it happen. And Arthur's unique. Uh, he's one of the supreme rock vocalists of our time. We would serve it to you see. He was the first person to link rock music and theatre together. With the crazy world of Arthur Brown in the late 60s, he invented characters, uh, fantastic characters with robes and masks, uh, makeup, and presented them as mini dramas with his band on stage. Lord of a country that's the hand of imperial power As near as damage to royalty itself And then I'll lay my vice regal crown At the feet, the adorable feet the haughty and proud and desirable feet The feet of my princess Worthy at last of the feet of my princess Vice Roy and Vice Ray me and my princess What's uh, this thing about feet, Judge? Uh, well, I, obviously I've got to extrapolate the guy's motives and, and, and character, you know, from the available yeah, information. Disgusting. But <laughs> the thing that gives rise to it is that when the uh, airship crashed and they were going through the wreckage, they found underneath the ashes a single woman's high-heeled shoe. The worry was, had a woman been smuggled on board the airship? 
and uh, the government instituted a, a, a top-level security investigation, and they found eventually that this shoe had belonged to Lord Thompson, who apparently used to ta <laughs> take it around with him. What he wanted it for, nobody it knew. <laughs> we don't know. So that's the origin for his kind of interest in that uh, subject in his song. Was it the princess's shoe? Do we know that? Well, no, we don't. We don't know. It was just a woman's shoe. But he was obsessed by the princess. He was obsessed by the princess. He was uh, having an affair with uh, this Romanian princess. Is this the one played by Elena Lovett? That's it, yeah. I've, I've got them, you know, doing tangos mm -hmm. and, 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 and so on. You know, he's clearly a... A bit uh, Denny Mond, really. Yeah. I mean, he's a great ladies' man, very debonair, dashing, and mm -hmm. so on. So I think he'd, he'd, be, a, he'd be Tango Man. Tango well, Man 1929. What Demi Mond, if I might ask? A little bit sort of iffy, you know, society and not quite society. I mean, was that, was that element? Minister, the situation is really not good. I think attempting the India flight would be very unwise at the moment. You realise, Owen, this is most irregular. Sir, forgive me, but I can't believe you're in full possession of all the facts. Your superiors have assured me. And things stand in the same. My advisors are confident. I must insist on the program being adhered to. I have made my plans accordingly. The great British public is all keyed up. Our hands are to the plow, no turning back. I can't take responsibility for the safety of the ship. All right, if you're afraid, don't go. We can easily replace you. Surprised at you showing the white feather. Well, if you put it like that, Secretary of State, there's nothing more to be said. I will do my duty. Very well, then, that's better. Gung ho, man, that's the spirit. Yes, of course, we can disregard this conversation. are afraid they're yellow all through that ship is quite safe damn that gypsy crone that ignorant peasant in Bucharest can't get her off my mind and the things she said when she read my palm a glorious future the world at my feet but nothing after 1930, nothing after the age of 55. Said she couldn't see any further. I gave her more money, but she shook her head. But I know India is waiting for me. And faint heart never won a princess. So just keep your nerve and show them the wind. Ride them all hard and show them the wheel. Anything else 